world. <laughs> you make up your own decision. The reason I came up here today, a dog in the neighborhood went missing. Now, how did I track this dog down? Well, down there at that window is the earth. And this is where everything happens. Down there, they got digital recognition, face recognition. They even know what you had for your breakfast. And of course, when the dog went missing, we tracked him down to the moon. So we're going to head up there and see can we have a find find the dog, and then we'll go on from there. But it's, it's amazing the digital tracking because of politics. And of course, in Victoria, well, perhaps it was a miracle. And we can't mention God because the creator of that world out there. You, you can't mention him, him God either because. That could be seen on reasonable grounds to be anti-progressive. So we've got to be very careful what we say and think. So that's why I'm making any statements I'm making up here and I'm making from our destination. So let's head to the destination and we'll continue the conversation a little further. Well, we arrived. And as you can see, the dog is here too. And he's looking for that bone. I think that's what started the whole thing off. He was looking for the bone and decided to obviously jump on a spaceship. Now if you believe that story, well then perhaps you should join me here. Well what we're going to do now, we're going to look at the out Fox News, the Outsiders, and have a look at some of the real things that you can look forward to up there on that planet, which was created by God. Now I didn't say that because I can get in trouble for that, but I think I'm pretty safe down here, or up here, which way you want to look at it. From the moon, it's down, and from the from the earth that's up. Anyway, let's go and look at, at some of these videos from um, Outsiders. Rowan Dean, great man, explains what's going to happen. And as you know, on your telephone, your license is going to be on there, New South Wales are doing it, your bank account will be on there. There's going to be no more, no more paper notes, no more kinds, it'll all be digital. And we're going to adopt the, the fantastic system they have in China where you will obey without further to do, you just do it. Let's go and look at this anyway, and uh, you can make up your decision whether it's fact or fiction. Let's head back to Sky News. I've been warning about for at least a couple of years here the Great Reset taking place before our eyes. And it would appear we are powerless to stop it. What do I mean by the Great Reset? Well, most of us have heard about the you will own nothing and you will be happy garbage spouted by Klaus Schwab and his World Economic Forum, who are desperately pushing the notion of a fourth industrial revolution, which embraces, among its nuttier and scarier components, some extremely disturbing anti-Christian, anti-all religions, transhumanist fantasies. It's at the end what, what the fourth industrial revolution will lead to is a fusion of our physical, our ritual, and our biological identities. Hmm, sounds unpleasant, but before Klaus and his cronies start transforming us all into some kind of QR code version of God's humanity, which they, w which they will control, by the way, First, a number of elements have to be firmly in place. National borders need to be swept away. National governments need to be largely subservient to international globalist entities, undemocratic and unelected bodies, which wield enormous power and influence. Chief among them, the United Nations, the World Health Organization, the International Monetary Fund, the World Bank, and so on. Then they need to ensure that every one of us, once proud and free individuals, actually has a digital identity, as Klaus just mentioned. No digital identity, no fourth industrial revolution. And finally, we need a system of linking every individual's wealth to that digital identity. Hey presto, a global network of powerful groups and corporations that control every aspect of our lives, including how much we can spend, where we can travel, what we eat, what our carbon footprint is, right down to what we read, write and say, and I guess ultimately what we're allowed to think. Now, of course, there are other more familiar terms than we have, that we have historically used to describe this sorry state of affairs, a world dominated by a powerful merger of authoritarian governments, surveillance and big business. 
Democracy is not one of those terms. Conservatism isn't one of them either. Socialism and communism come close. Serfdom is another synonym. But fascism is actually the more accurate term. Although, perhaps we need a new term. I nominate Schwabism. Whatever you want to call it, it is not pretty. It allows governments to control you at the push of a button by using digital surveillance to identify you and then digital technology to punish you, as we saw during the Canadian trucker convoy demonstrations against COVID mandates last year. The Canadian government literally shut down the bank accounts of protesters. So they couldn't buy petrol, couldn't even feed themselves. Canada, yep. Yeah? Similar things are reported to be going on right now in Brazil, following what many are claiming was an election stolen by the corrupt <coughs> socialist regime there. But you need look no further than China to see how insidious this brave new world really is, what it looks like, because it's already happening there. It's called their social credit system or their social scores, and it uses mass surveillance, including facial recognition. Places like Bunnings, by the way, are bringing that in here facial recognition technology and digital IDs to punish or reward individuals according to their behaviour. I mentioned digital IDs. The Albanese government is forcing by November 30th all directors of companies or share or, or um, self-managed super funds and so on to sign up to their digital ID, director's digital ID by November the 30th or face a million dollar fine. Or to put it less politely, all of this merely enslaves the population. Step out of line, you know, say the wrong thing, attend the wrong meeting, eat the wrong food, and the digital noose quickly tightens. Suddenly you're not permitted to access money, or you're not permitted to travel, or you're not permitted into such and such a place, or given access to any government or medical services, or even to walk more than a short distance from your home. All at the touch of a button. By the way, even Klaus Schwab recognises that his fourth industrial revolution has some very disturbing military overtones. Oh, and look who's busy buying up his book about it. There's 16,000 copies at the same time. It was the Korean military. Um, because the fourth industrial revolution will have a major impact also on, on, uh, on warfare. Yes, China, Japan, and Korea. China and the two countries most terrified of China are the ones most interested in Klaus Schwab's fourth industrial revolution. This week, the Albanese government pushed us even further down the path towards the Great Reset. This modern day form of globalist digital technolo technological tyranny and potential enslavement. By signing us up to the climate adaptation agreement, Labour has further weakened our national sovereignty. Yet another global institution, we are now committed to handing over billions of your dollars for nothing in return to tin pot countries to do something or other about climate change. In my opinion, based on comments made by none other than Australia's chief scientist, Alan Finkel, every climate change commitment we sign up to, from Kyoto to Paris, and there's net zero, and there's methane cuts and everything else that lies ahead, will do nothing to reduce global temperatures, but merely impoverish and weaken us as a nation. Also this week, Albanese signed us up to the G20 and B20 declarations that look like committing us to permanent digital vaccine passports from next year, which could mean only the vaccinated will be able to travel internationally ever again. See how easily and with how little resistance the noose tightens? Think I'm exaggerating. According to Liberty Council, quote, the leaders from 20 countries at the recent G20 summit signed a declaration which states they agree to adopt vaccine passports to facilitate all international travel. Quote, the current membership of the G20 accounts for more than 66% of the world's population and includes Argentina, Australia, Brazil, Canada, China, France, Germany, Japan, India, Indonesia, Italy, Mexico, Russia, South Africa, Saudi Arabia, South Korea, Turkey, the United Kingdom, the United States and the European Union. Quote, the two-day summit concluded in Bali, Indonesia and consisted of talks between the G20 member countries Klaus Schwab, 
the World Economic Forum's chairperson also attended. Thanks, Albo. Great job. Well done, mate. Oh, that's right. I forgot to... I, I forgot there for a moment. You were, of course, a Trotskyite in your youth. How silly of me. Got to remember that. Anyway, Klaus also managed to squeeze in APEC along with the B20 in his busy globalist world-travelling schedule. In fact, the great thing about Klaus and co is that they are so cocky about their great reset plans that they quite happily boast about them. I played you the clip before about Klaus Schwab boasting how he had penetrated the cabinet of many countries, in particular Canada, where he claims half the cabinets are acolytes of his. There goes your democracy, Canada. Anyway, here's Klaus at, the, at this APEC meeting last week, chatting happily away to Chinese TV about what a brilliant job China is doing and how well they, China, is the role model for the rest of us. From your perspective, you understand this ambition of China to have the Chinese path toward modernization and share it uh, with the developing world. I uh, respect uh, China's achievements, which are tremendous over the last uh, over 40 years since the opening up and uh, policy and reform policy came into action. I think it's um, a role model for many countries, but I think also uh, we should leave it to each country uh, to make its own decision what system it wants to adapt. And I think we should be very careful in imposing systems. But the Chinese model is certainly a very attractive model for quite a number of countries. China, an attractive role model for so many countries. Thanks, Klaus. Not that we want to impose it on anyone, he says. No, 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 just sign here on the dotted, and away we go. Let's kick off with those international digital vaccine passports for everyone and work our way. If you're a person, you're in their system, get yourself an identification to say you, you are a, a man or a woman. Forget the word person, it's just a brand identification which makes you a life of misery. Anyway, lot of news sign off, catch you back on earth and pray for the future because if you don't, you'll have no future. Thank you.